My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to episode number 7 of the Jux DLC Transport Fever 2 series on our USA themed my, uh, mild, isn't <laughs> wild? Yeah, it's not, it wasn't very mild, it wasn't the mild west. The wild west, well, it is at the moment, we're in about 1818, uh, we will tame the west at some point, but yeah, welcome, welcome one and all. Before we get started today, a uh, very, very important shout out to take care of, and that's to William Smith, who has decided to pledge over on Patreon, so thank you very much indeed for that, William. That is a fantastic gesture, and one that is greatly appreciated. I've got a train ready for you, which we will take a look at in a few moments by way of thanks for that. Before we head over there though, um, this is the Joseph Walker station, not the stadium, it is a definitely a station, and you, you probably noticed at the end of the last episode we were struggling for logs for the uh, the line up towards where we were going, Knoxville, well initially to Memphis to the sawmill, but either way, yeah we were struggling to get the logs for that line. The uh, the one down to Bellevue, which is getting loaded right now, as we can see, had no such problems. I've made a few tweaks off camera, and as we can tell by the state of the platforms here, both lines now have a lot of logs ready for them when they arrive to pick them up, which is fantastic. So let's bring up the UI, and we'll just take a look at the changes that have been made. Oh, somebody isn't happy, so that's a great start to, great start to the day, isn't it? Let's have a look. Uh, we've got ourselves a deadlock, have we? Ah, it's the, uh, oh, it's nothing more than the length here. Right, okay. Um, so, how are we going to solve this? The only way we can do that is to double track this tunnel here, I think. So, let's take care of that. And if we're going to double track through the tunnel, we may as well connect it into this passing loop here and have a very extended passing loop for this section. Right, so if we put a signal to counterpart that one there, it's not, well it should, it, it is a one way track, but that was a two way signal, but it doesn't matter because the surrounding signals are all two way, uh, one way, sorry. Yeah, that will do for us, that will work. Okay, so that's that little uh, snafu taken care of. Not a great start to things, but there we go. Right, let's head back to the Joseph Walker station. So what I've done is I've brought in a second forestry industry and uh, had a, a line set up to bring logs in. And rather than dropping off at an, an unload point, a roadside unload point, which is how we were handling it initially I've changed out for an actual truck station that way each line or each of the two lines has their own has their own platform where they are delivering the logs to as we can see the roads are a bit up and over in this area the reason I've done that is to try and keep the uh, interaction between the two lines down to a minimum especially at the junctions so they don't have to wait to turn in or to merge in. So if we just bring up the line manager we can see the ones from this new forest they come over the bridge so they don't have to mess about here and wait for access come down here around through and loop straight back out so there's absolutely no interaction at all either with vehicles on their own line or vehicles on our original line. Speaking of the original line, they now come straight forward, double back on the syllables, drop off, and then carry on down here. So we do have a bit of self-interaction here, but there's no waiting around for the the new line. And it's flowing pretty, pretty steadily and pretty nicely. And it seems to be doing exactly what we need it to do, as evidenced by the amount of logs that we have over here. Because of the amount of logs I've had to put down some cargo buildings, we probably, well, we definitely didn't need quite this many. But I've done them anyway. 
So that's the uh, the only change between episodes. The only uh, change to the network, anyway. But as I said, we've got a, a, a special name train to go and take a look at. And here is the William Smith. It's one of the passenger lines from New Haven to Haywood. It's had a custom paint job, so it stands out from the crowd. And I have also gone ahead and increased the uh, monthly maintenance on this train to the maximum. That way this train will never suffer from corrosion or rust or dirt or dust. And it's always going to look nice and shiny and sparkly and prestigious, which is exactly what we want. Of course, if you had designs on another train, uh, William, do let me know and I'm more than happy to uh, swap the name in around and just let me know which train you would prefer instead. That is absolutely not a problem. So once again, thank you very much for your pledge over on Patreon, William. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's crack on with today's episode proper. So last time out, we got this line connected up here and we are now taking planks up to the Knoxville Machinery Factory. We can just take a quick look at this line. And we can see it's, it's expensive to run, but by and large it does make us a profit. You can see there's the occasional time when it does not, but that's not a problem. So I've got no concerns with the state of affairs on that line at the moment. Here's the truck line that we set up right at the end of episode number 6. Just dropping off the coal into the sawmill. I had to remove some of the trucks on here, there were just too many. And they were forming a massive queue down here to pick up the coal. So I've deleted, well not, I've sold a few of those just to keep it flowing a little bit more freely. So given that we have coal coming into our steel mill, the next logical step is to bring in some iron as well to supplement that coal and then we can start producing the steel. So we have a couple of iron mines up here by Clarksville and I think they're probably looking like the most likely candidates for the ones we're going to tap into to connect into this steel mill. Now the terrain down here is somewhat limited. We have these two mesas right here. So the floor footprint down here is a little restrictive. We also have a few hillsides nearby as well. We have that one there, this little bridge down here and of course this one here so it's not going to be a straightforward build or not as straightforward as perhaps you might think it would be at first glance regardless we need to do it so let's get a cargo station and for now we're just going to have one platform because the only commodity that we're running into this station at the moment is the iron now in terms of station positioning this is where the terrain works against us here because yeah we're we're gonna struggle on this bit to find a nice little place for it we could go down here along the roadside we still have that direct connection to the industry and I think that's what we'll do it just keeps it away from these hillsides here so we're not cutting into the terrain too uh, aggressively and we'll just call this the Knoxville Steelworks. Right, so for the iron, I think we'll tap into this iron, um, iron ore mine up here by Clarksville. Because then we can just run the line down here, through, and then up into the, uh, to the iron mine. And then we could also provide a working connection into our passenger line here. Just so this station is officially part of the network. And uh, we might be able to get in here or here as well. But that could be a little tight. Let's just have a quick play about and experiment with that actually. So we can get it in there, but it, we have to cross the passenger line as we can see here. However, the crossing doesn't look too bad. And if it's only to uh, link everything together and provide access, then 
I don't see much of a problem with that. So I think we'll, yeah, we'll connect it in that side as well. Even if it's only an artificial connection, that's never actually going to be used. Just smooth the terrain off over the sides there. Maybe just along the edge here between the roadside and our station. Perfect. And then from this side, we want to head out. Hmm. I'll say keep the train line level. And then we might just have to rework this road here. Because as we can see, it's going to give them... Whoops, didn't mean to do that. If we keep it the train line flat, it's going to give them an aggressive hump here. Which we'll have to deal with, because um, I wouldn't be too happy with that. But we will deal with that at the end. Because for now we want to head out and start getting some iron brought in. Now this is going to be very tight here because we need to turn before the feet of this mesa. So we can get through this gap here up into the uh, Clarksville iron ore mine. So we're going to have to sacrifice some speed on this corner. Which is, uh, I think it's going to be unavoidable. But after this corner, we should be fairly straight and true. So regaining any lost speed should be pretty straightforward. So we'll take the hit here. And then it looks like from here on out, we will be able to maintain a good speed, maximum speed, all the way up to the, to the industry. And in fact, a lot of this line will be quite straight as we can see. We need to curve a little bit here. Just make sure we are curving enough to head where we need to. There we go, that's fine. Maybe a little bit less, yep yeah, there. That's maintained 75 miles per hour on that corner, which is the key metric that we're aiming for when it comes to our corners where possible. Yep, and we've got a lovely straight run now, all the way up to the, uh, to the iron mine. So let's build our station for the iron mine. And once again, we only need to keep it as a single platform for the time being. And we do have scope and room for expansion later on, if we need to. Just trying to see if we could connect it onto that corner, but it doesn't look like we can. And if we put it there, then we're going to have to redo that track there because we're too misaligned. So I think what we'll have to do instead is maybe if we put our station on this side. Yes, we're a little bit misaligned, but it isn't too aggressive and we should be able to sort it out. And then we'll just give a road connection between the station and the industry. Okay, you need to actually climb up a bit there, don't you? Yeah. Right. Can we squeeze one in this corner? Well, not if it's going to do that. We can't. Now, it doesn't look like we can. And that's doing nasty things to the terrain there. So we'll get it from this side. We'll come out. And if we get a connection on this side, if it will give us one... Yep, there's a connection point there. Tell you what, if we can keep this straight, that would be perfect. There we go, that's much better. That looks more natural. That should give us a connection, and indeed it has done just that. The terrain around here isn't the best, as we can see, which is not something we're used to dealing with so far in this series. But we uh, persevere, and we do what we can. And then if we connect that in as a straight shot, a single connection, it curves a little bit, but that's uh, that's fine. It's I think I'd rather take a little curve there rather than demolishing the whole thing and coming back even further. Maybe between episodes I'll change my mind and I will go through and demolish the whole thing, but just to get the ball rolling, it's going to be absolutely fine. We don't sacrifice any speed on that little wiggle. And while it might not be the most pleasing thing we've ever done, it's going to work. And 
this the speed is the main priority and as we saw the speed was absolutely fine so I'll just blend some of the terrain edges off on this new stretch of track we are going to want some double tracks on this because we'll probably have two trains running so I think we'll have a double track or a passing loop here what length is this 390 meters so that's perfect our train is not going to be that sort of length at least not yet so we can take that in fact we could probably make that a little better or a little longer for a little bit more speed um, what are you doing there we go yeah that'll be fine for one passing loop we'll have this stretch single tracked and we'll have another passing loop on this long stretch here if we're only having two trains then they should space themselves out in such a way that they're not going to trip over each other and if they do have to wait from time to time then so be it it won't be the end of the world and as I said uh, maybe was it in episode number one either way it was early doors in the series I did say I'm not going to be too concerned about getting perfect throughputs and efficiencies and if there are times when trains are waiting for one another then that, that's just part of life isn't it anyway let's finish off this with a set of signals there and we do have access from this line so we could buy our train from that depot or what we could do yeah it's gonna have to be that depot because even though they can go into the station and turn around and head up the passenger line they'll get very confused by that and they won't like it so we'll get our trains I'm just gonna put a signal there so if both trains are coming up at the same time then one can wait here while one clears this block here so let's get this line set up then so a new line from Clarksville and let's just quickly rename that to Clarksville Iron Mine so yeah, you're coming from Clarksville Iron Mine with a full load and you're heading down to Knoxville Steelworks I think that colour orange is probably a little bit too vibrant so I think we'll go for that one which uh, looks a little softer more in tune with the iron ore icon so that's what we're doing here so this will be RC and this is iron only with a small R though iron ore and you are coming from Clarksville so we need a four letter denominator for Clarksville uh, CLKV CKSV which one no I think CLKV was fine CLKV to KNXV there we go I think we used KNXV for Knoxville yes we have and this is the first iteration or the first instance of using Clarksville so whatever we choose it doesn't break any uh, normality not normality I can't even think of the word it doesn't break any precedent there we go right so let's buy ourselves some iron ore trains so still no new locomotives available to us so once again I think we're going to return to the 280 Baldwin class 56 the consolidation double head it and we want gondolas so that's 20 wagons on the consist that gives us a length of 236 meters it's pretty decent on the gradients and the track is perfectly flat anyway because we made sure of that stick on the caboose 6 million so it's 12 for 2 of them let's go for that and let's head up here so we can actually see the line in our field of view and you're coming on this line here I know Clarksville to Knoxville you're unable to find a path to the stop rightio let's see why that is ah that's right because they'd have to go into the station and turn around and as I just mentioned for this depot oh could we no nope, either way they have to go to the station and turn around so what we can do 
Um, where can we do it from? What we can do is from this passing loop here is we can get a track that breaks away. Maintaining the height. Just to ensure we have a nice looking overlap. And we can have this come around and just quickly click into this track here. Again, the, uh, the junction looks nice. This is only for access, so we can one-way it. So we'll put a signal there. Now, from this depot, they should be able to find their way to that new line. Let's just test that. Yeah, there we go. So they're going to have to come all the way around here, through the Memphis Sawmill, around here. And at this point, this is where they start to get within touching distance of their own dedicated line. That's fine, that's going to work. So pretty soon, we'll see iron being produced. Yep, there it is. First few units on the platform. We'll then see the iron being brought down here, to which that will be converted, along with the coal, into some steel. That steel, we're then going to bring it up here into the Knoxville Machines Factory, and that will give us a supply of machines, which we can then feed into Knoxville very very easily so let's get that up and running ready so we want a truck station here because they're going to be loading and not unloading and we'll just go for the single platform again for this right okay let's look at the terrain because it doesn't look the best so what we're going to have to do here I think is have this located up here uh, we no, we're not going to be able to get enough access point out there, not without tunnelling through the mesa, which is completely unnecessary. So we'll allow these, one of the rare occasions when I will allow this, we'll allow them to turn them around on the station itself. I don't usually do that, but for the sake of having a tunnel through here, which is it's doable, but it's just a little bit over the top, yeah, we'll just uh, allow them to do what they want to do. So let's rename this, that way we know what it's what it's doing. No, it's not iron ore mine, it's a steel mill. The Knoxville Steel Mill. There we go. Didn't mean to pause it. Perfect. So they'll pick up here. Come hopefully down here. Join in here. Run along this nice straight line here. And then we'll have them turn off down here. And we want to give them, in fact, what we're going to want here is a two-platform truck station because as soon as that steel comes in, we'll have machinery to take out. So we want one for the machines and one for the steel drop-off. And then we want a two-way station entrance there. And let's just give that a nice... Can we get into that junction there? It's a bit right angled there, but I think that's how right. it's not even a right angle. It's less than that. What's that about? 70 degrees, 80 degrees, but either way it's fine. So yeah, they can come in and out either side. Just to make sure that they're gonna not loop around on their platforms when they're both up and running. That's the steel and the machinery line, of course. If we use a couple of waypoints there, we can cover all bases. Let's just rename this to the Knoxville Machinery Factory. In fact, Knoxville Machinery is fine. Right, so what we can do is get the, the bones of the steel line ready. So you can be that sort of colour, a sort of bluey grey. We do want these to be fully loaded. Um, we want to make sure, I don't think they would, but just on the very small chance that they start to just pick up some of the surplus coal and iron that gets delivered, we'll make sure they can only pick up steel here. And they're coming from the steel mill. And we'll have these guys come down here, drop off, leave this way. There we go. Let's just put you onto platform two. That's better. That makes a bit more sense. Wonderful. In, down, out. Back down here. Turn off at your junction. 
come down to the Knoxville steel mill. Wonderful. So this is the T for trucks and this is steel. And we're not going anywhere else. We're just in the confines of the locality of Knoxville. So we'll just call it Knoxville. Great. I suppose we may as well get some trucks ready on this, even though for a while they will be running empty because it's going to take a while for the iron ore trains to get up this way and make a delivery. And I think to start the ball rolling, we will go with 10. He says tentatively. Very much subject to change. Right, so that's that. So what we can do now, even though the machines are going to be even longer in terms of uh, time to production, because the steel then has to get from there up to here, we can at least get the trucks ready so that as soon as that machinery is produced, we have people ready to pick it up and drop it into Knoxville. So what we want is a truck unload stop in Knoxville. Now we do have a few stragglers on the eastern side of Knoxville, but for the most part, the machinery is needed on the western side. And obviously the east and west is determined by this uh, train line and this station which completely dissects the city. So if we had an unload point there, that pretty much covers everything or as much as we possibly can with a single one. So if we went for a new line and we want this to be maybe that colour, maybe even uh, we could do a custom one here, let's shift click and we want, it's almost white but with a tinge of grey in it, maybe that. So if we go that colour, yeah that will work and we're coming from Knoxville Machinery, it's very difficult to see this one but it is what it is. We want you to come out via this waypoint and then come up here, up here, up here, drop off. And I bet you're turning around. I bet you're you turning, although it's... No, you're not. I can just about make... I'm going to have to change that colour. That, that just doesn't work, does it? Let's shift click and let's just go for a darker grey. It doesn't nearly... It doesn't quite match the uh, the colour colour of the uh, the icon, but we need to be able to see what it's doing and yet you're coming back down this way and ideally what we want you to do is come in to the uh, to the station via this direction and we want you on platform one here there we go it just keeps it nice and tidy in and around the station there doesn't it so that will work what do we have here we have the front and act we haven't got any boats yet but we probably will do at some point we have the 260 mobile so I think that's the first new train we've had for a while so we might want to take a look at that let's just get this uh, this new line named up first and this is machinery and this is Knoxville so let's just very quickly decide what to do here I'm going to just have them stick to load if available because I don't want a whole host of trucks waiting down here while we have no production so if that means they run empty initially then so be it it's a small price to pay. So Knoxville Machinery is ready to go. Let's head over here. Buy vehicles. Uh, which one do we want to use? It's going to have to be the horse-drawn carriage for this. And I think five to start the ball rolling is going to be fine. We don't want to colour them. We don't need to colour them. Put them on the machinery line. Has Have, rather, any of our trains arrived onto our iron ore line at this point? Not yet. Hopefully we're getting uh, we're getting close. Where is that one of them? Yes, it is. And I'm guessing you're the leading train. Let's just check that. So you're train 21, I believe. Yes, you were. So train 11 is the other one. And yeah, you're some distance back. Probably we had a bit of wait time around here on this junction, but that's okay. Once they're clear of the junction down here, they're never going to be impacted again. So if they cause a bit of delay when they're first gaining access to their line or en route to their line it's not the worst thing in the world and it's not something we have to panic about what we'll do the last thing we'll do before we end it we come up to about half an hour in terms of a uh, video length and obviously we've got to get the cab ride in as well is we'll have a look and see if we want to use the 260 mogul anywhere on our network 
So we have our trains to Knoxville now. If we were going to choose it on one of these, we'd sacrifice some speed because I believe it said the 260 in Knoxville had a top speed of 48 miles per hour, whereas the uh, Virginia and Truckee 440 s have a top speed of 50 miles per hour. But let's just have a quick look and then we'll do a side by side comparison here. So let's stick a mogul on that one. So, yes, yeah, so we, we, we lose a little bit of speed here. We're also losing a little bit of power, 6 kilowatts worth, which is not a great deal, to be honest. And I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that that's a worthwhile upgrade. Is it perhaps more conducive to our freight lines? Well, let's just tech, tech, let's just check using these trains here. So, in fact, yes, you're a lot more powerful. Yes, we're, we're not going to get full utilization of that speed because we're track uh, sorry where we are wagon limited to 31 miles per hour regardless so this increase in 10 miles per hour here is going to be lost on us however we've got a big bump in the power and a decent jump up in tractive effort as well but obviously the downside to that is it's an extra 70,000 per year to run so for this train that equates to 140,000 extra because we have two of them but how is it doing in terms of getting up to its speed in fact, look at that, it's not even as fast. 27 miles per hour on a medium grade, 26 on a medium grade. Obviously that must be because of this excess weight right here. Yeah, 122 ton, whereas a 280 is only 50 ton. So even two of those combined still weighs in less than a single 260 mogul. So I'm not sure if we'll ever have scope to use the mogul, unfortunately. Although, given that it is easy mode, it might be worth sticking it on just for the sake of it. Perhaps on something where we're single-headed. For example, these trains here, the brick delivery trains into New Haven. Let's have a quick look here. So you were using, what is that? Ah, yeah, that's it, the Eureka, which is... One of the 10 variants of the American 440. Now, I'm going to guess you're better here. No, but there's a very, very little in it. So I think just so we have it somewhere on our network, we will swap out the Eureka on this line for the 260 moguls. And then we'll drop down and have a look at the mogul. It does look like a very nice train. It would be a shame not to have it anywhere on the network. And if we unlock the highest speed cargo wagons shortly, which I believe we do, then the mogul should start coming into its own because, of course, we've got an extra 10 mile per hour top speed over the American 440s. Yep, very nice train indeed. All right, so now it's time to pick a train for the cab ride and for me it's got to be one of the iron ore trains if we have one in location yet oh yes we do look at that that is fortuitous timing so we'll hop on board this and it's not the longest run in the world so i think we'll go to the iron ore mine and back to the steel mill for our cab ride for this one so i'm guessing we're going to pass straight through here are we going to stop Yep, we're stopping. Okay, that's fine. It gives us time to say farewell, doesn't it? So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and you are continuing to enjoy this series. I completely forgot to rework that stretch of road there in front of us where we caused them a little roller coaster ride. So I'll do that between episodes, I think, and find a way to get that tidied up as much as we possibly can. As always, your comments, feedback and suggestions are more than welcome down below. And of course, we do have the Discord server up and running as well. If you want to pop over there and join in the conversation over there as well. Those on Discord get slightly earlier access to the videos by a few hours. And I'm going to start, as I said in the end of the last episode, start giving any Patreon supporters even earlier access to videos. Um, they'll get access as soon as the, uh, the videos have rendered to HD uh, quality level on YouTube. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves.
It's Tata for now.